Hey everybody, thank you for joining me on my very first episode for Swords and Sandals. Uh, this time I am going to be making a church right here. A little, medi mm, little medieval church here. Um, actual foam walls, foam construction, and wooden shingles, wooden armature up here for the, the top. Um, I also made it modular. So if I decide I wanted to do something, you know, like an actual roof or whatever the case may be, I could put that on there. Um, so um, this is the very first time that I have ever done anything um, foam related ever. Um, so uh, let's stop the talking and let's just start building. I kind of already had a basic shape in mind, so I just wanted to get a little sketch out here first and make sure I had an idea of what was going on before I really started to, to draw it out on the foam core. So uh, I did not have a template for this. Um, I actually draw everything on the foam core uh, with the basic idea uh, with a ruler and pencil and go from scratch. Uh, I would not recommend this unless you're really, really comfortable with making sure all your edges are squared uh, before you really start and being able to actually do that with circles and whatnot beforehand. So I started um, with uh, pinning a uh, design first. And I, the, honestly, the, the idea is that I had this sort of rectangular sort of uh, bell tower in the front, and eventually I found out that this was just not something that I really wanted. Uh, aesthetically, it just didn't look very good. So I went back and I ended up having to recreate it a couple of times. Um, but uh, if you notice when I put the, the pins in the foam core, it's because I am never, ever, ever putting anything down that's actually going to be solid until I'm absolutely 100% sure it's where I want to go. Otherwise, it's just too hard. You end up destroying too much. So um, I'll make maybe two or three of these before I finally got to the point where I was really happy with the design. And of course, uh, when it comes to the schematic, um, I've updated it to be my uh, very last design and not all the stuff in between. Um, circles are always just so hard to cut. Uh, it takes forever, um, even when it's sped up. So here I am just kind of putting in the pins. These are basic, I don't know what, pen, I don't know what type of pins these are, but I like them because I can see them if I drop them. Um, as opposed to those little foam pins that have the heads on them for, that are just the same color. But anyway, so there I am. I haven't actually done this yet. And right about here, I decided that um, I did not like that sort of rectangular look. So instead of planning it out on paper, I just sort of uh, winged it, really, and just tried to figure out a way to actually make the shape and change it for my model. Um, in this case, I'm actually cutting off a little bit more of the roof and so I can actually make it completely square and with it square I was able to actually do a lot more with it and I'm not really sure why I didn't do that from the beginning but I didn't so there I am piecing it all together um, it's all one piece in the template uh, I made it much much easier instead of having a bunch of extra pieces it's just mainly four I think all together so I pin up everything on the roof and see what's happening with this and I'm honestly not really quite sure what the next step here is in the video. Apparently I'm talking quite a lot for no reason. Oh yes, finally I'm gluing it together. In this case, just regular hot glue, no big deal, nothing really special. Um, but I do it one at a time and to make sure I get it all right and it doesn't actually warp or bend on me in any way. Um, so I piece this all together, making sure I get the insides first to the outside so I don't actually... Uh, lock myself out of it then I go back in and do it like a nice really heavy mold so now I was actually really going to um, change and make the roof come off I decided not to do this so um, here I went down and made this thing real time because this is the first time I've ever worked with foam so I wanted to make sure that I kinda had a, a real size so I was stuck on the sizes for the bricks because this is actually a 148 scale, 150 scale church, the bricks would be ridiculously small, the stonework or whatever. It would be, that would be a lot of bricks. So I decided to kind of go with a 112 scale, and then that way it makes it so much easier for me to be able to do this thing. And I think it actually works pretty well. It's not as realistic in, in regards to if it were real life. Uh, with something standing there, but it's about six or seven stones tall with a, per, uh, with a figure, so fine. 
Uh, this is me just putting basic, um, I put four holes in the top there so I could create a modular system. Just use some straws, cut them off to make place markers so that way I didn't fill it in by accident. Obviously this is more my patchwork, brickwork kind of thing here. Um, I don't know why I keep tapping on it, but there we go. Uh, this is plaster, just regular wall joint compound. Um, so... I did not make the brick texture as thick as I wanted to. I should have, because the compound uh, will actually fill in a lot of those gaps. So, and I, again, never working with foam, I'm not really sure how well the plaster was going to really work. Um, but I knew I needed to fill it in because I had had a lot of gaps um, because of my sort of patchwork design that I had, I had chose to do for the stone. Um, but basically this is pretty simple I just kind of put it all on there get it as smooth as I possibly can filling in all those irregular joints and then I'm gonna go back with a paper towel and actually wipe down the surface uh, while it's still wet uh, just so that way I can actually get uh, a little bit more of that brick uh, detail and weathering from it so I'm gonna eventually do that but right now I'm just getting some excess scraping some of that off there we go I have the paper towel now and I do that a lot um, after one side I had to throw the paper towel away because it's just too much so you gotta really watch out for that or you're gonna smear it and then um, it was creating kind of a weird texture so I ended up sort of dabbing uh, the outside of it quite a bit so then that way it would actually add a little bit of that sort of stone texture to it and that really helped with uh, there I'm doing it right now uh, it helped by having some of that wet plaster, and then it gave it a little bit of a relief. So I was able to pull some of that texture back into it. Um, there I am. So in this case, I actually went back through. I'm talking about the roof, but who cares? Um, I did go back with Mod Podge and fill that in, and then I went back and painted this uh, base sort of sand color. wasn't really happy with it. I'm going to change it later. But um, the what I was talking about here is I had to make all these individual bricks or excuse me shingles and I used uh, looked everywhere trying to find something easy to cut these things and it was really difficult so I ended up just buying uh, aviation snips and using it that way and it was really fast to cut um, this is pretty much you know simple here a little bit of glue and I just keep lining them up offsetting them every, every half um, eventually I'm creating like a little V pattern just so that way I didn't go over each other but here we are right there uh, I kind of went wonky on some of the edges here you can see the lines are not really that straight and then just basically capped everything off uh, with one long thing a uh, piece of the stick whatever it's called and this is a homemade wash that I made sort of wash slash stain um, made like every other wash that you can find online uh, went back through and just kept going through until I liked the texture. I kind of made a regular pattern, let it dry a little uh, a little bit, and went back. And so that way it kind of created some weathering. After this brown uh, wash, I let it dry a little bit and then went back and did a black wash on it too. So that way it created a little bit a deeper tone. And eventually I put a matte finish Mod Podge over the whole thing to seal it. Um, because my shingles are a bit irregular, um, there's that black wash. Actually, no, take that back. There's brown wash still. Um, there is with the black wash, yeah. So there I am deciding that the sand color is not the perfect color. Went back and just went with a really light gray. I'm doing some sort of um, some little speckling with about three or four different colors of gray, uh, light and dark. The dark I regretted, so I wouldn't recommend that. Um, and there I am, I don't know, talking about something else here I'm not really quite sure um, so yeah you can see all the little speckle work the I intended for that dark to be sort of weathering it just didn't look good after it was all said and done so I had to go back and fix that but this is just a basic black wash right here um, you know the same stuff I found on the internet recipes um, but I went back through and did this and then I'm, because I filled in a lot of the gaps it kind of smoothed some stuff over so that was a little bit of a problem um, I think I fixed a lot of that, but I'm not really quite sure. But I went back through and filled it all in. And I was actually pretty happy with it when I finally dried. Uh, went back over it maybe two or three times just for some of those areas that got a little irregular. I also left the, 
uh, the church standing straight so that way I would have that run with gravity you know thinking that if it rained in a real building that stuff would wash down um, remember this is sort of time everybody was burning coal so I figured all that soot would have gotten onto the stone and then washed down so that was my logic for that so this is me going back and just kind of filling in some of those lighter areas there um, ended up having a little bit of the wash so we'll kind of do this now this is where I had some irregular pattern for because of some glue or some, some you know something else that was on there the wash just wasn't sinking into so I took a little bit of uh, gray paint and went back and actually touched that up and then uh, here's the speckle to try to smooth that back in and then I went back with the wash a little bit more afterwards to go back and kind of clean that up now this is where I'm fixing all those really dark speckles um, and with a little bit of lighter paint then I'm just washing them back over to make them blend in some and then you know fix a little detail while I'm at it um, this is me going over with a little bit of a dry brush on a light light gray paint and then I go back with um, sort of a damp paper towel and tap it in and kind of blend it all in to the to the rest um, and here I'm just realizing that there's a lot of gaps in between and you can see the white from the roof tiles so I went back with some black and just did that this is vinyl just some clear uh, inkjet vinyl I ended up not liking it very much but I was able to actually find a pattern online and print it off and it, it worked out pretty well you gotta make sure when you put that stuff on there though that it's very smooth around the edges other because I didn't which is why I got a little bit more bumpy window so definitely make sure it's smooth before you go further than that uh, the doors that I actually ended up cutting out for the pieces in the beginning of the styrofoam I kept so I can put all of this wood on them later um, this is just some really small like I think it's 1 16th by 3 16th base wood so I just sort of I bought it and then eventually cut them down to fit this little bitty door here. Um, obviously not at the speed that I was cutting or I would have cut my fingers off. But so I just rounded them off, kind of cleaned up that glue in between because I really wanted the cracks to show. Um, and I'm going to go back and actually, yeah, do this little stain here with the exact same stain that I did for the roof. But I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter so it actually doesn't look exactly like uh, the roof itself and then I'm doing the edges a little darker but no black this time just the brown this is that sort of plastic vinyl stuff that you can get I forget what it's called exactly but you can get it at hobby stores and I'm gonna make this sort of steel banding I was trying to figure out how to do the bolts so I ended up using a um, this is uh, 3d fabric paint and it holds its shape pretty well but it does flatten out a little bit but I just put little dots on the whole thing and then let it set up for about five or six minutes and then eventually I'm going to go back and paint it black. Um, and it actually worked pretty well for the most part. They sunk a little bit more than I was when I wanted, but um, you can really work with it for a while. So there it is. They're done. I used a black gloss this time. I wanted it to sort of stand out from the. Um, see there it is. I wanted it to stand out from the 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 door a little bit, being the, the finishes. And uh, well. I don't know, I had a little bit of a hard time with this. Uh, I might not do it the same way next time, but this is the way I did this time. I cut them in pan, you know, cut them in little pieces, glued them separately. I did this because the front doors are actually double doors. So I didn't want them to actually just go straight across and cut. So I did it the, I don't know, maybe the smart way? I'm not really quite sure. As I continue to do this, I'll figure out which one's the smart way. But that one is just uh, some little jewelry beads for the door handles, and that's about it, really. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this build. Um, well, to be fair, this took a really long time. Uh, it really did. Um, this, I think it was about 26 hours from start to finish. Now, mind you, for me, I was um, just learning how to use foam for the very first time, so every technique was pretty much brand new to me. Um, I was also um, kind of redesigning as time went on. So those all sort of added to the whole thing. Uh, ultimately, I have somewhere around 1,600 foam bricks that I individually placed. There's just a little over 1,200 shingles front and back. And obviously, the, 
there's the little wooden floor in there on the top of there. Not a big deal. That took me just a few minutes. Um, but overall, uh, I think I'm going to try something a little smaller next time. <laughs> something that doesn't take as much time. But uh, you can get this download of my template here and all the measurements that I took and used for it um, on my Patreon. Please go check out my Patreon, the link below. Now this schematic for this build is actually absolutely free. You do not have to be a member, but I would love for you to sign up and help contribute to my Patreon account and keep me doing this all the time. Please um, like, share, comment, everything you possibly do for social media, and let me know what you're thinking. Let me know some stuff I could build. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Let me know whatever it's on your mind. Please let me know. And uh, next time, I will see you soon with, uh, I'm thinking Haunted House, maybe? Something like that for Halloween. I don't know. Something like that. We'll see. Till then.